Hello and welcome to Budget Model Railways. Uh, today I'm just going to do some shunting. I've been asked to do uh, a shunting video um, and uh, I've been doing quite a lot of shunting later and I, I thought we'd use this one which is the little UK outline one. Nice little compact ingle nook. A um, couple of disclaimers before we start. Firstly, as we've all commented, shunting uh, works absolutely fine right up until the point that you start trying to film it. Very similar to the point that layouts run exceedingly well right up until the point you get to the exhibition hall. So any bloopers I'm afraid you'll just have to bear with me. Um, in any case for me that's part of the joy of shunting. I think the idea, I'm not an automatic shunting hands off, I, I occasionally use the hands of God. A rail, a wagon derails, wagon derail, derails, it's, it's not going to be the end of the world. I also need to say for a few people that um, tend to criticise these things, there is no such thing as rules for an ingle nook uh, puzzle. I get taken to task that, that, that it's got to be a five, four, three and things like this. Um, I, I read the book uh, uh, by Cyril Freezer, who is the godfather of British Model Railways, who, who got me started on ingle nooks. And he's quite clear in his explanation. An ingle nook is what size you make it. The only requirement is that your head shunt will take the wagons that you want to clear. So if you get offended by the way I'm doing it, um, please don't waste your time replying in. Um, shunting really is, is just for a bit of fun. So what I'm using here now are the Pico wagon kits that you know I'm a big fan of. Uh, it's quite enjoyable to paint them. Um, they paint up very well, they weather very well, uh, as hopefully you can see here. And I'm just using our 3D printed body um, on a Kato chassis, which is very reliable, even over the points. Famous last words till I start shunting. I'm also just using a simple card system, um, just brief descriptions. Now again, I know people will write in and, and comment on all sorts of much better ways of doing it, um, but I like to try and keep things simple um, that everybody can do. When I got the time, I like the idea of photographing them and having a card uh, with a photo, which is nice. Um, but I like doing it this way. I'm not a big fan of having numbers on the wagons. I find just having some visually different wagons works quite well. And all we're going to do is pick four cards out of here uh, and I'm going to put them in an order. I'm going to put them in the back actually, but so that you can see, I'm just taking them out here. So I'm going to have a grey box, an ochre box van, an ochre cattle wagon and a covered wagon car key. Um, I'll put them where, where they're not in the way, but I can see them wherever you list. Um, and now what I'll probably try and do is leave the brake van on the end as well. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that works. Uncoupling and coupling, paper clip on the end of a coffee stirrer. Many years ago when I started doing model railways, I started with N and I struggled with uncoupling. And I foolishly asked a couple of forums who said, no, no, can't be done, can't be done, unless you invest in very, very expensive couplings. Yeah, it's nonsense. Um, Arnold couplings are fine. They're, they're easily, if anything, better than tension lock couplings. Yes, they are quite small, but I find they're very easy to do with a hook. Anyway, let's give it a go uh, and see how we get on. So what I'm going to do first off is couple those up, take this rake out. And then I'm going to run some of them. Now, as always with this, people will be able to come back and say, ah, oh, well, it would have been quicker if you did this, etc. Um, the whole thing really with the shunting puzzle is it's to some degree there for you to do what you want to do with. So there we go. That should have, oh, would have uncoupled it, but I've just pushed it back in again. There we go. Now this is the only problem, I've stopped that on a point. So you see, I said everything will run fine until you start trying to film it. And they're usually very good on the Kato on the points, but they don't like stopping right on the plastic frogs. So I'm then going to pull these out so that I can put the brake van at the end of the run. There we go. I've mentioned this layout quite a bit in the past. When we've done some shunting, I will just do a little bit of a more of a talk on it. Now we want the grey box next. So we're just gonna. Uh, I'm still. There we go. So that's going to be relatively simple. I'll just run these off in here, and they couple and uncouple better on a straight. That 
that's the first one we want and we can just run that back in then like that and then we want I think the, yeah, the other one that's in there um, so we'll run those back. I just switch the points over. Obviously, you could do yourself automatic points if you want. I'm not bothered with these because um, they're easy to reach. I'm filming this from a bit of a higher level so you can see, but it works quite nicely if you're sat lower actually and you get a more of a side on view. Little bit jittery there. I've just uh, knocked the. Um, Fiddle yard, which has altered the connection. There we go. Um, oh, and as it happens, I should have left that one there. I wasn't paying attention because that's actually I'm going to slow that down a little bit. The speed's built up. The only thing I do find with the Kato, which are obviously normally wonderful chassis, is they do sometimes run slightly quicker in one direction than the other. Um, in fact, I should have read my notes even closer because that's the one we want. There we go. So that's the consist that we picked out. So we can then run those back in there. Uncouple those. It's quite nice that loco. It's quite believable, really, as one of the early um, diesels. Nudge in there, and then we run off, and we're done. Got Morris Minor sat in the goods yard. Now, what quintessentially English could you get? My late father, very famous for driving them at insane speeds while smoking and holding conversations. Um, at his funeral, the uh, very kind uh, vicar said that he always felt closer to God when he was driving my father because he felt he would met him, meet him at any moment. <laughs> He's a bit of a quick, dry, fast driver, my dad. Um, as his um, coffin went through to be cremated, we, we played the theme tune from the Formula One <laughs> TV programme at the time. Um, so we've got that. Um, what we'll do now is pick four more cards. We've had a bit of a shuffle. Um, There we go. So um, we're going to leave the brake van where it is. I'm only going to do two of these because I'm sure people will get bored of watching, but it's just to show the idea. And there we go. That's that. We're just going to leave that one there. It's the card system really that, that makes the whole shunting for me much better. Um, the idea of saying, well, the coal wagon's got to go there and the cattle wagon's got to go there and the goods wagons have got to go there soon gets quite samey uh, because it, you're not moving them around. Whereas in reality, in goods yards, there was an awful lot of moving around to get them in the right consist for somewhere else on the line. I think that coupling is going to play up, yeah. Uh, yep, yeah, so there we go. Let's just see if that one's going to work. There we go. Yes, yeah, so there was a great deal of moving around in goods yards. And there were any number of lines where there was no passing loop at the end. Um, so the, the ingle nook's not completely unrealistic. So it's the end of the line, and this is where we're having to shunt stuff up and down to get them ready to drop off to stations further down the branch. That's that one. A little bit quick, but as I say, they do tend to run quicker one way than the other.
good controller helps and we're just use I'm just using here one of our own um, budget model railways controllers the advantage of that is pretty much once you've got the speed set you just flick the forward backwards switch um, you don't need to keep playing with the speed I'm just going to hand it got a little bit there because we need a bit of resistance to catch on the usual uh, proviso purists are not going to like my videos and there we go that runs out again and I'm perhaps I'm a sad individual but I can quite happily spend an hour or so quietly doing that um, Doug did the maths it's something like 4,000 combinations given the number of wagons that I've got here um, so it's quite a you're not going to get bored with it you can run different locos I haven't got that many UK outline ones I've got the quite nice electric steeple cab one um, I have toyed with getting one nice UK one, but to be honest, I'm quite happy with our 3D printed one. Um, it's got a nice look, that layout. It's only tiny. It's only about 18 inches by 10, something like that. Um, it's only roofing felt as ballast mat. A few cheap buildings, a bit of scatter. Back scene painted by my good lady wife. Um, nice and simple, little fiddle yard off the end. Um, doesn't take any space, could live in a bookcase or on a shelf. Um, and you take it out when you want to do some shunting. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that. I've, I've promised a shunting layout for a long while um, and more videos out soon.